Hey YouTubers, what's happening? Today I'm making a video to talk about uh, HOBs or hang on the back filters and why I prefer them over sponge filters. Uh, there's um, multiple reasons as to how I feel that they can benefit better. Um, the biggest one is that anyone who's in the hobby knows about beneficial bacteria and how important it is. All right, and that sponge filters do the trick because they're non-chemical. Um, you know, they're immersed in the tank. Um, it gets the process going and it and it keeps it once the beneficial bacteria has grown and very little maintenance and they're cheaper. Uh, hang on, the back filters are more expensive. I bought this random one today. It's uh, Whisper because I'm currently putting together a 40 gallon. I have several tanks. Um, they do cost a little bit more. The cheap ones are okay. There are cheap ones and expensive ones. I found that the only real difference between the cheap ones and the expensive ones is that uh, the more expensive ones claim to be more, you know, silent or uh, that their filtration system in general is just better. But um, in my opinion, they're all exactly the same. It doesn't matter. Once you open one up, they all look exactly the same. Inside, you will see that there are a plastic piece that this is uh, used to gather beneficial bacteria. And then you get this secondary filters. Um, they don't always look exactly like this, but similar piece of plastic. And inside, you will find a piece of foam. And if you look at it, inside this foam is carbon, uh, you know, like charcoal. And uh, it is, you know, meant to help remove all the microscopic stuff and stop your tank from stinking and all of those things. Well, uh, what's wrong with these is that after a month you have to replace them because the carbon goes bad and um, you have to keep buying new filters for them. The second reason why it's bad to use what it comes with is because every time you replace it and pull it out of your filter and toss it, you have just removed the majority of the beneficial bacteria that you have been growing over the past four to six weeks that keep your fish or and or plants alive, uh, so to speak. That is another video I can do to talk about how that whole thing starts. But anyway, you can, uh, you know, replace these very easily. Um, I buy just packages of filter padding you know this collects the small particle stuff and then uh, filters uh, you know sponge filters you just cut it down to size and shove them in there and you never have to replace them just once a month take them out wring them out pull out the, the dirty stuff and put them back in um, I, I, I don't use bubblers so that's another reason why I don't like um, sponge filters as they're immersed and they create a lot of bubbles on the surface of your water which is good because it's uh you know creating surface tension which you know adds oxygen to the water etc um i don't like all that it splashes water everywhere i don't put lids on my tanks people will tell you fish will jump out yes this can happen but i use a lot of floating uh plants and other things that discourage that type of behavior and so i just don't I don't put a top on there and bubblers and sponge filters splash water everywhere and um, not only that sponge filters take up at least a gallon of space in your tank and I want all that extra space for my fish and plants you know so I still use the old school old school route of buying filters I've used all kinds I've even used the really cheap cheaply made stuff the top fin company that you, you'll find a, their products are at like um, PetSmart, uh, real cheap filters, um, but I haven't noticed anything significantly different between them and spending spending 20 bucks on a top fin HOB or spending $80 on like an AquaClear or a Fluval, you know, so even the name brand stuff you find at the big stores, those are fine. Buy it. Yes, sponge filters will cost you under $10, but if you spend $10 more, you can get something that's not going to take up space inside of your tank. Um, 
ergo allowing you to have more space for fish to swim around freely, and your HOBs provide, I don't care what any YouTuber says, you have an H on the, uh, you have a hang on the back filter, it is giving proper surface agitation for your aquarium to get oxygen and CO2 and all of that. You don't need both. Um, so I just stick with the uh, hang on the back filters. It dumps water in there and circulates it and bubblers can make a mess. And if you have a large tank with a huge bubbler going across it, like a six inch one, all you see are bubbles. Even if you put it behind like plants or decorations or whatever you do, you just see a bunch of bubbles going everywhere. Not all fish even like the bubbles. You know, some fish like calmer water and don't want to be blasted out of the way by a bunch of air injection. You know, those bubblers do not provide oxygen. They just rise to the surface. The bubbles explode, allowing um, natural CO2 and oxygen from the air around it to get inside the water. So they're not even oxygen pumps. I mean... You could even uh, you can even oxidate you know a aquarium just by simply dipping a cup of filling a cup of water and dumping it back into the tank and doing that a few times over and over. Uh, that'll do it also. But if you have an HOB, I don't care what kind it is, whether it has a water adjustment flow on it or not, it is going to be circulating the water sufficiently enough to keep everything alive, uh, fish and uh, plants, you know the whole nine yards. Costs a little bit more, but I've never had one of any kind fail on me all of a sudden, and I have to go buy new ones. Um, I use Top Fin in my other tanks. Uh, it works great. I just throw away the carbon filters and put in the fiber media myself and uh, bio media. Some people like Lava Rocks or the little, um, uh, they're like chalk, little circular chalk things that you can put in there. I found that's not necessary. You put the thin fiber stuff in there. This right here. Cut it to whatever size it needs to be. And then also grab the thick sponge filter and cut that to whatever size it needs to be. Put both in there. The finer filter will grab all the tiny stuff. And the thicker one uh, will grab the, you know, thick things. You know, the um, waste, poop, uh, dead, you know, stems, twigs, leaves, whatever. Um, and like I said, you just take it out once a month and just wring it out in some dechlorinated water or some of the water you've siphoned out of your tank, um, and put it back in there. Um, us hobbyists, we love, uh, b bacteria. We need that bacteria. You need lots of it and as much of it, you know, so I'll make another video describing how you can test for these things because you, you can't test for beneficial bacteria, but there are ways to know if it's in there. Uh, so that's something else we can talk about. But uh, leave a comment. You know, if you have a question, maybe I didn't describe everything that you would like to know about hang on the back filters. Um, but if you start YouTubing videos on filtration systems, 90% of them are all going to tell you to switch to a sponge filter because of this whole nitrogen cycle and beneficial bacteria, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, it's all true. And yes, it's a cheap way to do it, and you don't need an HOB. They take up a huge amount of space in your tank and create a reverse effect on the surface agitation you're looking for. The water explodes upwards instead of uh, an H uh, hang on the back filter. When it dumps the water in, the water is being circulated in a downward motion. You're not having bubbles rise and then pop and then potentially escaping your tank and getting on something, you know, so to speak. Um, you know, uh, some people say they don't like hang on the back filters because they're louder. Bubblers are loud too. And if you're searching around to try to make a tank that makes no noise whatsoever, uh, you're in the wrong business. I mean, you're dealing with water and fish and et cetera, and it's all circulating and it's going to make sound, you know, most people find the sound of water flowing soothing. So uh, don't waste your money on expensive stuff that claim that it's going to keep it completely quiet. Buy the cheap, loud one. Who cares? There's, they're all going to make noise. You know, whether the motor's silent or not, it's still dumping water. That's going to make noise too. So 
Um, that's all I have to say. Uh, leave a comment. This whole tank here is still, you know, I, I'm working on it today. I'm going to make some more videos here, but I've got some thermometers and heaters and whatnot anyway. But uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please put a comment below and I'll uh, answer it the best I can.